Okay, we're going to talk about DNA replication. DNA has to replicate all the time because every cell in your body needs an identical copy of your DNA. It's like every musician in the orchestra has to have the music in front of them so they can all work together and play the right song. So, they're showing a little analogy here. Here's the DNA, the double-stranded DNA, the helix, going into this replication factory, which is basically, it's not a factory, it's a bunch of little proteins inside the nucleus of your cell. This all takes place in the nucleus. We're going to learn about the different workers in this factory, the proteins, and out will spit on the other side two identical copies of DNA. Okay, now the way DNA replicates we're going to see is called the semi-conservative method. In other words, ha semi means half. This The original blue molecule, uh, d molecule of DNA goes in, and each new identical copy has one of the original blue molecules of strands of DNA. Okay, and the red strand of DNA all right, is made from new nucleotides, all right, from the food you eat. So let's see what let's see what goes on here. So the objectives of the lesson is to understand um, the functions of a bunch of different proteins. All right, and to learn a little bit about how this works. So in the nucleus, this pink part of each cell, we have DNA, and when it's time to make a new cell, the DNA has to be replicated. Okay, so if you get a cut, you have to fill in the little cut. This will happen if you're growing, all right? If you're replacing damaged cells or dead cells, you are you have to make more cells, and this process of making new DNA is going to kick in. All right, so DNA is going to be fed through these series of proteins, which do a bunch of different complicated jobs, and we're seeing a little bit uh, of what I talked about last time. Each, so we're going to open up the the uh, the two strands of this DNA molecule, and each blue strand is going to serve as like a template upon which we copy a complementary new strand, the red one. The red is made of new nucleotides, the building blocks of, pro of uh, DNA, and the blue one is the original strand. So the fact that we have half of a new molecule is the old strand, is the, made of an old strand, the blue one, and half is made of new. That's called semi-conservative. Half, conservative means to keep, to conserve. Semi means half. Half is kept, all right? Half of the new molecule is the old uh, strand, and half of the new DNA molecule is, the new, is a new strand. Okay, so semi-conservative replication means that see. Okay. Now, we have a bunch of different cartoon-looking proteins that are going to be filled in up here, and here's our um, DNA. It doesn't look like a helix anymore, just for simplicity's sake. <clears throat> the first step that happens is a, a, um, is a enzyme, a protein, an enzyme called helicase unwinds the helix. It unzips the two strands, okay? So these represent the A's, T's, C's, and G's of DNA, all right? And these are the complementary bases, and it's going to break through the hydrogen bonds to unzip these um, two strands. But the, the, the strands are flimsy, like string. So if they're floating around in the cytoplasm and they happen to kind of come close together, they could what we call reanneal or reattach. The A's could reattach to T's, the C's could reattach to G's. So we have to hold the two strands open now. That's the job of SSB, single stranded binding protein. It's going to help to hold each strand apart so that we can do the work. Okay? Anchors the two strands apart so we can do the work. Primase is an enzyme that adds a little. RNA, not a DNA, primer down. That's why it's not, uh, that's why it's, they're showing you this little red line here. Okay, so primase is an enzyme that takes, t 
that makes a temporary little stretch of RNA nucleotides. Um, if you think about what primer does, um, you put it down first before you paint so that you can put the final coat of paint on. So it's, temp it's temporary. You're not going to see at the end. You have to prime a pump. You know, if before you use a snowblower, you have to prime it. Um, you have to prime the engine so that it'll work. So um, this is something you put on first, primary school first. Okay, so primary means first. You put this down first and it's temporary. It's going to be taken off later, but we'll see why in a second. Now, the green, the green enzyme is called polymerase. It polymerizes or elongates. It makes the complementary strand to the original. All right, here's the, what we call the parent strand, and we're making the new strand of DNA. And so it's going to read the A and add a T. Okay, the purple here represents new nucleotides of DNA. It's going to read a, a, a G and add a C. Okay, so it knows how to, quote-unquote, read the letters of DNA and add the right op, uh, opposing ones. This little gray hockey stick-looking thing is called the sliding clamp. It helps the DNA polymerase stay on. Now, the DNA polymerase can only uh, add in one direction, all right? So this one is going to go in this direction up here. It's like you can only read from left to right, not from right to left. Um, it can only read in one direction. And on the other side here, it reads in the other direction. Okay. It also cannot add to an open area. It has to first recognize a nucleotide. So the, R the reason we have to put an RNA primer down is so that uh, it can find where to land. It's like, these are almost like runway lights, right? The plane doesn't know where to land on the runway without the lights at night. These are like runway lights showing the enzyme where to go. Okay. So this DNA polymerase is reading A's and T's and C's and G's and adding them appropriately. And this one is doing the same, but they're working in opposite directions. Okay. RNase H is the next enzyme. Its job is, as you can see in the video, just to remove the RNA primer. So we don't want mixes of RNA and DNA together. RNA is less stable than DNA nucleotides. So we have to remove the primer. And our, a DNA polymerase can now go back and fill in the gaps. Okay. On both strands, RNase H removes the primer and DNA polymerase will go back and fill in the gaps. Then there's one more spot between the sugar and the phosphate um, of where one little um, RNA primer, the last nucleotide was there, and the beginning of where the DNA um, starts for the next one. And it, it can't be filled in um, by DNA polymerase for whatever reason. The shape of that active site doesn't allow it to. So there's another little enzyme called ligase. To ligate means to join, and all it does is it forces the sugar to bond with the phosphate between these two um, nucleotides. Okay? So you can match the enzyme to its functions. Removes the primer. That's RNase-H. Creates the primer is primase. Prevents reannealing or reattaching. That is um, the, the single-stranded binding proteins, SSBs. Separates the DNA is helicase. Links the, uh, the last little bit of chains together would be ligase. There is no DNA primer, so that's just a trick. Creates DNA primer. You wouldn't need a DNA primer. We don't have a DNA primer. Extends the DNA, elongates the DNA as the polymerase, and helps hold it all together as the sliding clamp. Okay. Good job. We're going to, I'm going to stop this video and make a second one. All right. Because I'm almost at 10 minutes here. And, um, and then part two, we'll talk a little bit more in detail.